everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Menchef here. It's been a minute since I've done a drought update, uh, but I think it's time. So let's talk about uh, the wet season so far. We'll take a look at the drought map. We'll take a look at El Nino and the PNA, the Pacific North American Oscillation. Uh, all these things have to do uh, with our drought or the lack thereof. So here is the drought map as of Sunday, December 3rd. No drought, 95.32% of the state of California, that gray base map color. Abnormally dry, just under 5% in the yellow, which, if you remember, is not technically drought. That is either entering or recovering from drought. And in much of our case, that would be recovering from drought. So things are still looking good. There's technically no drought, no moderate drought, no severe, no extreme, certainly no exceptional drought, which is so much better than where we were at this time last year. The numbers, though, for the start of the water year, which did start October 1st, uh, the numbers are lagging behind a little bit. Uh, we are behind for the month of December so far, just a few days in, though. Uh, and we are behind for the water year as a whole, which again started on October 1st. So the total so far, downtown Sacramento, 1.2 inches. Normally, we've had, had almost three inches at this point. So we are under about a quarter or an inch and three quarters. That's okay. We have plenty of the wet season left to go. Most of the state, in fact, is below where they should be through this time of the year. It's just been slow to get going, kind of similar to last year. We did have a storm pretty early last year, but then it was pretty quiet. And most of the early part of December was relatively quiet as well. If you remember, it wasn't until New Year's that we really got going with last year's uh, wet winter. So uh, it, even though these numbers show that the state is below average through this point in the water year, it, it is what it is. We have so much time left. December is really just the beginning of our rainy and snowy season. Here's what the snowpack looks like as of December 1st. Average to date in the northern Sierra, 19%, 33% in the central Sierra, and 26% in the southern Sierra. But that all-important April 1st number is still between 2 and 3 or 2 and 4% across the Sierra. Statewide, average to date, 27%, and that percent of April 1st average is 3%. We did get some additional snow over the weekend, however. Uh, Sierra at Tahoe, four inches. This is new snow, by the way, just over the last 24 hours. So Saturday morning to Sunday morning doesn't include the snow, albeit it was only, again, another one to four inches, but it doesn't include what fell Thursday and Friday. So Sierra at Tahoe, four inches. Sugar Bowl, three inches. The Central Sierra Snow Lab, two inches. Kirkwood, an inch. Boreal, an inch. The, the highest I saw this morning was Sierra at Tahoe at four inches. So uh, maybe we saw on some of the more rural peaks uh, that we, we did get a little bit more, but generally... There wasn't a ton of moisture to work with, but it is better than the initial model runs that we were looking at Tuesday and Wednesday going into this storm. We thought the bulk of it was going to fall early on, and it did, but then the models kind of last minute put a little bit more snow back into the forecast, thankfully. So when all is said and done, we should end up total-wise, storm total-wise, uh, for some areas with uh, about half a foot of snow or so, so right around six inches. Our reservoirs are still doing pretty well, 67% capacity at Shasta, 66% at Oroville, 49% at Folsom, average today 125 at Shasta, 132 at Oroville, and 124 at Folsom, uh, obviously much better than where we were last year. Uh, but again, we are doing a little bit of uh, reservoir management, making way, making a little bit of room for that rainy season, which really traditionally, uh, on average, when you look at the numbers, starts this month. Here are those averages for December in downtown Sacramento. 59 degrees, the average high at the start of the month, 55 degrees, the average high by the end of it, 42 degrees, average low at the start, 40 degrees, average low by the end. But you notice this number here, average rainfall for the month of December, downtown Sacramento is just about three and a half inches, which is significantly more than where we were in November and certainly quite a bit more than where we were in October. So December, January, and February are really our rainiest months in Northern California. This is just using Sacramento's numbers, but the December through February uh, holds for all of Northern California, really. This is the start of our rainy season, the, the real start, if you will, uh, because over three inches, almost four inches, over three and a half inches in February, even March is not too bad at all. Almost three inches typically falls in March. So looking at these numbers, it's easy to be discouraged, but we're just getting started. And I know we kind of have some recency bias because it feels like last winter was so wet. And it was. It really honestly was. But it was kind of on the last half. The first half of the rainy season, the first half of the wet season in general last year, was really below average for most of it. 
It, again, wasn't until we got to New Year's and then January that that fire hose really kicked on. One of the things we have working for us this year that we didn't have last year is El Nino. So as we take a look at those sea surface temperature anomalies, you see all the reds and the dark reds right across the equatorial Pacific. That's good news. That's textbook sign of El Nino off the coast uh, of South America. But the, the real area that we're interested in is roughly right here called the Nino 3.4 index. It's regions three and four of the El Nino. That, it's just a bunch of technical terms, but really it's just called the Nino 3.4 index. It means this part roughly uh, is what we're really interested in. That equatorial Pacific is the area we're really interested in. It's 1.48 right now, plus 1.48 degrees C above average. It was at one point closer to plus two. It has turned down a little bit, but as we'll see here, it's about to go back up. What we're looking at is a depth chart, if you will, uh, of ocean temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. So here's the international dateline right here, right at 180 degrees. And then we're working our way towards the coast of South America as we go this way. This is depth. So we're looking at the surface of the ocean, 100 meters, 200, 300, 400, 500 meters in depth. And these little X's here that we see, those are buoys, which are actually measuring the temperature of the ocean. And this is in degrees Celsius, so it's not in degrees Fahrenheit, but degrees Celsius. What we see, 30 plus degrees Celsius water. That's pretty warm water, uh, but that's all out there towards the daylight, out in the open Pacific. What we're interested in really is what the water's doing down here. And you can't really tell just by looking at actual temperatures, but what you can really see when you look at the temperature anomaly is what the water is doing. So the anomaly tells us, is the water warmer than average or is the water cooler than average? And with a La Nina, right, which we had last winter, you would expect to see cooler than average anomalies, so negative number anomalies. With El Nino, warmer than average, you'd expect to see uh, positive anomalies, right? Uh, positive numbers. That's indeed what we see. So right off the coast of South America, we've actually got really, really warm water. Five degrees C above average just off the coast of South America. Now, the way that the currents work with El Nino, remember, this is the same thing. So this is right at the surface, 100 meters deep, 200 meters deep, 300, 400, 500 meters deep. So what we're looking at is if, if we kind of tilted the globe down and we're looking underwater, right? Uh, so we're kind of underwater looking at the depth profile, the temperature profile of the water. And the way the current works is it pushes it off the coast of South America, back out into the open Pacific. Once it reaches the maritime continent near Papua New Guinea, near Australia, it's gonna dive back down and then it's gonna work its way back across. This whole process takes weeks and even a couple months uh, to make a whole trip, but what we notice is that right out in the, uh, just past the dateline, we see another four and five degree C contour of warmer water. And this water is about 150 meters deep, but it's working its way to the coast. So what we're gonna see over the next month and a half as we work towards January and through the start of January, this water is gonna work its way out. This water is gonna replace it. So right now we've got warm water that's about to fuel this El Nino and it's gonna get even warmer than where it is right now. And as we know, we've talked about it a lot, El Ninos and the stronger they are, typically means a wetter than average winter in Northern California. So we've got that going for us, which we didn't have last year. So even though it's slow, we've got plenty of wet season left and the El Nino is cooking out there. It is going to get even warmer over the next month. One of the things we can do, we can't see quite out towards January, but we can see towards about mid-December, getting close to Christmas time, December 19th, what this is is the Pacific North American oscillation or the Pacific North American pattern. What this tells us, if it's positive numbers, we're going to be typically warmer and drier because positive numbers means there's high pressure sitting over the west coast of the United States. If it's negative, it typically means we're going to be cooler, we're going to be wetter, and that is because high pressure is not sitting right over the west coast of the U.S. So what we can see when we look at the model data, the GFS model, the American model is in red here. Right now it's about neutral. It's right about zero uh, on, the, uh, on the scale. This isn't degrees, it's just uh, a scale, right? So it's right about zero right now. So we're kind of neutral, which makes sense. Through the weekend in Northern California, we've had some snow, we've had a little bit of rain out there. It's been cooler than average, kind of close to average some days but we're about to warm up again. We're gonna go back into the middle 60s. We're gonna dry out for a few days. 
And that's reflected here. High pressure starts to build back in. So we start to get some positive numbers on the PA. That's why we're going to be drier early next week. Well, it doesn't last very long. The numbers start to go negative again. And there's good agreement. The Euro model is in blue. The American model is in red. And they both agree we're going to go to about plus two. Then we're going to drop back towards zero. And we're going to have some late week rain chances. That is, in fact, in the forecast, some late week rain chances in Northern California. We could see a tenth to maybe a quarter of an inch of rain in the valley. And we'll likely see about two to four inches of snow in the Sierra later on this week. So that makes sense that we're going to see these numbers on the PNA go back towards a little bit below zero, back towards the negative. Then they come back a little bit, so we'll have a few days of some drier weather. They do diverge a little, but what the signal is saying this far out, this is from about December 10th or 11th, all the way out towards the first day of winter, towards Christmas time. These numbers don't go back very far into the positives. They stay close to zero. And in fact, the American model takes it down towards about a minus one to a minus two. And so what that's saying is that it thinks this high pressure that's been kind of sitting overhead for most of the last month or so, we've had some rainy days, but then that high pressure takes place again, like what we see here. We had a few rainy days, high pressure builds back in. What it's saying here is that it expects, the GFS does, the American model expects that the high pressure's going to stay away for a stretch here for about a week, maybe more. And that's going to open the door to some of these cooler than average conditions, to some of these wetter than average conditions. We could see more rain. We could, could see more snow. And when the PNA goes negative and stays negative, that's when we can see some of those days with pretty heavy rain and some pretty heavy snow as well. We can't say too much more than that because it's what I call, what a lot of meteorologists kind of call fantasy land. When you go out more than about 10 days, the models can change so much. But when you look at a kind of uh, high level overhead look at just kind of weather patterns, like where are we going to be under high pressure, low pressure, like with the PNA, then we can kind of just get an, an idea, a, a little glimpse of what might the weather look like? What might we be able to expect? And there you go. Negative PNA looks to stay that way as we go through the middle of December, maybe towards Christmas. That means we could be cooler and we could be wetter than average as well. That's where things stand right now with all things related to drought and water. Uh, of course, we're going to keep you updated here at ABC 10. Uh, I don't have a, a, an interview with you today or for you to listen to today, uh, but I hope that gives you some clarity as to where the drought stands. We did have some questions about that and kind of the long range forecasting with El Nino. It is still out there. It's still cooking. Things are still going in the right direction. All good things related to El Nino. In terms of, the, of our weather here locally, what can we kind of expect after a brief drying period? The models are hinting that things are going to get cooler and likely a little bit wetter as well. And of course, you can always watch ABC 10 Plus live local, always on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV. Uh, we've got a lot of weather playlists up there with some in-depth forecasting. We've got some weather specials up there like Mega Flood Water Wasted. And you can look at the entire California drought series uh, always on. Again, that's ABC 10 Plus. Thanks for watching. Uh, happy early holidays. And of course, we'll be back.